Okay. So let's see if it's going to start. Okay. I want this to look the same as you are looking at. And I want to get rid of all your faces so I don't see y'all saying, what? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Okay. So this is what I saw when I thought about cycles. Does this look like familiar where you guys are just kind of running around? This particular person's chasing money, but what's on the hook? What's on the hook that's keeping you from uh, being free? What kind of things are you continually going around and around and around in circles, uh, chasing after something, but never quite getting it? That's what this this teaching is really about you are free to go yet you're stuck in a rut and going in circles time and time again um so cycles is really defined as a series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order so we know there are cycles for domestic violence, you know, for if you're being in an abusive re relationship, you have cycles. If you think about addictions, you have these cycles that you kind of go around. When God showed me the cycles, you know, I kind of extract and make it simple. You know, uh, everything can be simplified for me. But if you think about the, the cycles, they can bring hope. Not every cycle is a bad cycle. Um, some cycles are good cycles. So when you think about the stages of death, that's a cycle where, where you start to shut down and you kind of go through this motion of, 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 of your body shutting down. And so if you're going through that cycle, uh, you can kind of know where people are. Uh, and even this is not even in physical life, but there's also this cycle that happens when you're sp going spiritually dead. You lose your, you use your diet. You don't want your food. You don't want the things of God anymore. You start getting sleepy and getting lazy. You get detached from the church. You get detached from your, your friends. You begin to get physically distressed. You might start eating or you stop eating. Uh, you start getting mentally distressed is the next one. And then you get discomfort. Then you lose all discernment. And then after that, you, you just die. So this, this cycle People go through this in a spiritual way. And then, of course, there's the grief cycle. That's a positive cycle. Grief is not a good, is not necessarily a happy thing to go through, but there is a cycle that you have to go through. And it's a healthy cycle. This particular cycle, it's not a bad thing. The whole thing of making it through the grief cycle is so that you can get to the point of acceptance and hope. If you look at the book of Judges, this is what I caught out in the street. For those of you who are new, um, if you have questions, you can ask them at any time. Just uh, come off mute and ask your question. No question is, is off the record. Every question is, is, is available for you. So we want to treat this like a, a interactive class. So if you have any questions, please do ask. Uh, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason when you can ask a question. Just ask it whenever. <laughs> that's my smart ass daughter i'm sure she doesn't but do you have a question <laughs> i didn't think so <laughs> she has my sense of humor okay so this is the sin cycle this cycle comes up in judges one through nine and if you think about it this this is my makeup you won't find this out there that's why you have this the stages of death is mine i taught taught on that uh in seattle at one of the churches that I am uh, was trying to help their intercession team. So that's a cycle that I made up. That's why I had the Kingdom Builders International logo. Similarly, I made this cycle up uh, for this particular teaching when I taught it in the street. And so if you look at Judges 1 through 9 and you look at how Israel treated God, there was an abandonment that happened, then God got angry. Um, and then there was anguish with the people. And then God answered by raising up a judge. And then the people had some type of attitude. They repented of the things they were doing wrong. And then after they repented, they began to act out in sin. And then they walked in apostrophe. They just disobeyed God. 
And then they felt abandonment and anger and it started all over again. And so God raised up a judge to get them out of their cycle. But instead of breaking free of the cycle, they decided to stay in it. And how often has God gotten us out of something for us to go back in it because of our attitude? Yeah, that's that's what keeps us in our cycle. It's not that God yeah. has wow. It, it's not that God doesn't want to free you. It's just this, we're just too lazy to stay out the cycle. We want the things our flesh want instead of wanting and desiring the things that the spirit wants. And anytime you're going to stay in your flesh, you're going to be in a cycle of death, destruction, uh, and it's not going to lead you to a good place. That's why you're going to just continue to spin around and around. Those are too, still too complicated. I like something really simple. And so the text that I'm going to use here is for breaking the cycles. It says here in Hebrews 12, 5 and 6, it says this. Have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to, to you as his children? He said, my children don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he, when he corrects you. And so I think that's what happens a lot of times. God wants to discipline us. He wants to send correction. But as soon as God disciplines us, it, this is what we say. God doesn't love me anymore. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Because he's correcting you, you're saying that God doesn't love you. No, that doesn't make sense. If God didn't love you, if me as a parent doesn't care about my child, I wouldn't discipline. And so we have to understand we have to desire discipline, but many times we want the circle and we don't want to break out of the circle. And so what we hopefully, what I'm seeking to teach you is giving you some ways and some disciplined, disciplined, uh, disciplines that you can use to help you break out uh, 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 any particular cycle. So this is the flesh cycle, which leads to death. This is the one that I've been showing you for a couple of weeks. And it's very simple. We start with yourself. You want something, the things that you want. And then when you have these things in your flesh, you go into something called strongholds. And that means you go into something that's in your mind. It's a truth that you believe. It's a lifestyle that you believe. It's something that you think is going to fix something, but most often it's not. And then you might spiritualize it. Uh, you might use spiritual uh, tools, but those spiritual tools are generally carnal. They're not really spiritual tools. You use them in a carnal way or a fleshly way. And so what does that mean? That means that you'll use the scripture, you'll read the scripture, and you're doing it by works, but you're not really doing it because you want to please God. You're doing it because like Israel, you want to stop the pain. That's going to have you go right back into the cycle because the reason why you're doing it is not right. And so how does this work? How do you get from the physical, from this, from this, from yourself, from, from your issues to the strongholds? The transitions that we'll learn about are triggers. What are our triggers? What's triggering us in our flesh to set off these strongholds? Once these strongholds are set up, the next thing that happens from strongholds to spirits is we fall into a trap. We fall in a trap to believe that God doesn't love us. We fall into a trap to say, as I can do it myself. We fall into the trap that says, oh, it's not that bad. This, this, somebody else has it worse than I do. And we have these beliefs that trap us. And even if we try some spiritual stuff, the training that we use is all fleshly. And so that's the definition that we have here. Uh, let me move this out the way so you can read it. Triggers are cause and effect patterns that are fired because of internal or external stimuli. So that's what's going to happen with the trigger. This is a cause and effect. If I do this, this is going to happen. If I believe this, that's going to happen. If I smell this scent, this is going to happen. If I find money, that's going to happen. If, if I uh, don't pay my bills, I'm going to be homeless. You know, all of these thoughts that we have will trigger these things that will have us go into these traps, which are schemes, situation, and, and, and shields 
that catch and hold people usually by sudden uh, 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 attacks. It's either uh, concealed or it's revealed. Um, just think about it. If you, uh, one of the triggers I used to have is a smell. And when I had this smell, I thought that uh, something bad was gonna happen. And so uh, automatically in my head, I, if I smelt this scent, I knew something bad was gonna happen and I began to self-protect. That's my training that I use. I self-protected myself because I believe, because I smelt this, that this bad thing was gonna happen. And because that bad thing was gonna happen, I'm gonna do a preemptive strike to protect myself because that's the training that I had in my flesh that I was going to make sure my needs and my desire and my safety was going to be established. Then I went right back into the cycle again. I never came out of it until I came out of it. Got it? So that's the, the basis of this pattern that we'll look at. And what we will find is we're going to use discipline. We're going to use discipline, which is the key to breaking these cycles, to give you disciplines that are truly spiritual disciplines. So there's going to be another cycle. Does that make sense to everyone? Any questions on that? So just to let you know, right? So strongholds are created in the mind. Yes. Strongholds, what we'll learn, are fortified positions that are in her mind. So God, the Bible says that uh, God is a strong tower and the righteous run to him, right? He's a strong tower, mm -hmm. right? But when you have strongholds, which are made of belief systems, you begin to make things that are not real your reality. And so the stronghold says, I'm not going to run to God for my safety. I'm going to run to this place because this is what's kept me safe. And it's a belief system and a pattern in our mind that we have built, and that's what make it a stronghold. Like escape. Thank you we for explaining them. it. Crazy. Crazy. Like, that's the reality. What did you say, Judy? I said, thank you for explaining what strongholds are. Yeah, I'll go to it in a lot more detail. You know, this is just an overview session. So, no. Pastor. <clears throat> Good. Yes. Pa Pastor, you said concealed or revealed, and I didn't get all of that when you said that. Um, concealed what what and what When you were after you were saying triggers, you said concealed or revealed. Um let me think what the context that I was saying that in. You said that they were schemes, situations, shields that were, yeah. Well, when we, or revealed. when we get caught in triggers, these are things that we either see, that means they're revealed, right. or things that are hidden, right? Okay. Things that we don't know about. Gotcha. That, like for just like for example, this, this today we had a girl that we were praying for, and she had things that were hidden in her mind. Mm -hmm. And because of those things that were hidden, she had a stronghold in her mind. And so what mm -hmm. we had to do is reveal the thing that was triggering her to go into her mind to trap her to think that she had to respond this particular way. Okay. And so we needed God to reveal that so it would not trigger her the same way. Gotcha. Okay? And so when we went in and we and we God revealed the mm -hmm. things that were hidden, now she was like, "Oh, that's why that was happening." So mm -hmm. now her mindset can change because a stronghold of something that she believed she saw was a lie. The lie mm -hmm. that she believed was she was safe in darkness. Mm -hmm. When we know we're not in darkness, we're not supposed right. to be in, supposed to be in light. But she right. believed. But once God shined light to her in her place of darkness, she saw light, and she said a weight fell off of her. Mm -hmm. She was afraid of the light. She had been afraid of the light when she was in her small natural self. But now, when she knew that the light was Christ. She said, yeah, the child, because I took her back to her childhood, she was now reaching for the light. Mm. So when you're breaking someone's strongholds, 
You've got to reveal what's been sealed to them. Gotcha. Because that revelation for them will give them something else so that the mental stronghold can be broken. Okay. Make All sense? right. Yes. Thank you. But like I said, we'll get into that a little bit more. This is just an overview. But this is the things that we'll be we'll be looking at, how those fortresses are being built in various situations. We'll talk about how those strongholds are being built. And then, of course, the discipline that we want to go through, true discipline, because that will be the key of, of breaking through. Good questions. Any more questions on this slide? No, just, just for this question, in a lot. Only Jesus can give true safety out of a strong power. Right. Okay. So this is the other cycle. Okay. This cycle leads to life, salvation, which is our savior. And then we have self-discipline, which we have to submit to. And then we have spiritual spirit uh, and, uh, or spiritual response. Okay. It's the same type of things. And so here, what's the transition between salvation and self-discipline? You have to trust the savior. A lot of people don't trust the savior since they don't trust the savior. They say, they say, but God, I don't trust you with this. And so we, we have a hard time doing self-discipline because we can't trust. We're saved, but since we can't trust, we don't use our discipline. And so therefore we don't even get on the cycle because we get on our flesh and then we go back into the other cycle. So saved people can jump out of this, go into the other cycle and stay in a death cycle but we have to trust God so that we can begin to act in self-discipline. The, the transition from self-discipline <laughs> to, to the spirit realm is a test. And today I had someone to say, she, was, she had a whole lot of issues in her life. If God is so, can get us out of everything, why does he, why did he cause all of this pain? And I was like, wow, how am I gonna answer this? Cause I'm talking to a five-year-old at this point. This is a five-year-old, even though it's a grown-up woman, I'm trying to heal her at five years old. And I said, God, give me a way to explain to a five-year-old how she can accept this, this, this pain, right? And he did it. That was totally God. Right. But it's God. testing. It's through testing. We don't want to get tested. God has a right to test our faith. God has a right to, I'm telling you as an adult, I didn't tell her that as a child, but I'm telling you as an adult, you're going to, your faith is going to be tested. And if you don't think you're, you, that you're, that you, that God needs to test you, then something's wrong with you. But that's how we get strong is through our testing. It's the testing of our faith that, that will make us not weak any longer. And so that's the transition. When you understand you're being tested, then you go into the spiritual realm. And now your training is in the spirit and not of the flesh. So trusting Jesus comes by having a relationship with him and believing salvation in Jesus is past, present, and a future experience. That's what you have to trust. You have to trust your salvation is not just to get you in heaven. You have to trust your salvation to get you out of your current hell because we're walking through it. But do you trust God? If you just think your salvation is that you will get saved, die, and go to heaven, you're missing the whole point of your salvation. It's for past, present, and future. And, and you, we have to understand that if we want to get off this cycle of death, that God came to crush the plan of the enemy. He came to set you free. He came to save you, right? Testing is a close examination of our character under pressure to see if we have genuine faith. That's how come you have to have this uh, self discipline. That's how come I'm, I'm trying to tell you guys about honor, about commitment, about you know all of these words that deal with your character. Our character in the church stinks. Our yes is a maybe. Our, 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 we, we don't do what God is asking us to do. We know God told us to go right, we go left. I mean, we're just all jacked up. Our characters just messed up. That's what he's testing. Are you going to be a man or woman of your word? <clears throat> yes is not maybe. Yes is not if it's convenient. 
no, that's not a yes. No. That's what he's testing, your character. Shelly, did you have something or you just coughing? No, oh, sorry, just coughing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then training in the spirit means we're doing things according to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. See, when you're in the training, it's not about what you feel like. It's about what is the what is the father telling you to do? How am I getting out of this situation? Even when I'm in that deliverance session, I'm like, okay, God, how, how do you want me? Give me wisdom in breaking this down so this girl can understand it. And it was beautiful because I said it and I'm like, wow, that was pretty good. And the girl was like, I get it. That makes sense. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Because yeah. I didn't have the wisdom, but God always has the wisdom. Do, will you do the training that's required so that anything that you can get your in, he'll get you out of it. Okay, that's really what the spiritual training does. Okay, and then in this cycle, faith is the key, but you also have to learn to endure. You're going to have to endure some trials. I mean, being a Christian, it doesn't mean that you're going to be happy and all everything's going to be great. Mm -hmm. I tell people that first come to Christ. I used to tell them in prison when they got saved, "Welcome to the kingdom." Now wait, all hell's going to break loose. <laughs> <laughs> you got a target on your back now. I, I don't be sugarcoating stuff. Be, but the difference I tell them, I just don't give them that. The difference is this. Before all hell was breaking loose in your life, you didn't have Jesus on your side. Now you do. He's there to help fight your battles. But now you just got to use him. Okay? Any questions about this cycle? This is how- In the bottom, it says- Training, the spirit means we, I can't see it all because of the people. What is the next word? We do things according to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. I figured that out. Thank you. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So discipline, what does discipline mean? According to Marian Dictionary, when used as a pronoun, dis discipline is controlled gained by enforcing obedience. I told them today, and I told you guys, God just doesn't want your obedience. He wants your extreme obedience. You have to en enforce your obedience or order, orderly um, or prescribed conduct or pattern of behavior, self-control. As a verb, it means trained, or developed by instruction and exercise, especially in self-control. To bring a group under control, it can also mean to punish due to breaking a rule. So these are all the things when we think about discipline that we have to uh, kind of come under. So these are the three kind of areas uh, when we think about that we're gonna be looking at. Trusting, what does that mean? We're gonna, if you, if, you're going to look at this thing, trust God. You have to, and this is all coming from Hebrews 12. Um, when you trust God, you have to take the training, the things that he's doing seriously. You have to learn to stop quitting. You have to be seen as a child of God. You have to learn to submit and you have to learn to show honor. Now that's in the area of testing. When I mean, tr trusting. When you think about testing, this is how God tests you, by chastening you, correcting you. Chastening means to uh, uh, come after you, to uh, cor uh, correct you in a harsh way. A correction can be nice. Chastening is a little harder. Chastening is like, I'm going to beat your butt. <laughs> yeah, cor correction is, Amanda, I told you, stop doing that. Do it again, I'm going to spank you. Okay. And, and we have to take chastening seriously. We have to, ch you know, Paige, for example, was like, I know I'm going to get beat. I'm going to do it anyway. And that's how we do. Yeah. I'll take the beating. We don't take it seriously. We, we want to do what we want to do and we don't care the consequences. Mando, on the other hand, if that's you corrected her, she didn't, she didn't want it. She was like, I'm stopping. I no, I don't want to get yelled at. <laughs> you know, every child has a level of testing that they are willing to trust or not trust um, the outcome. Somebody was going to ask a question. I was going to say, 
isn't that a stronghold in itself resisting all that what you it just is. explained it is it's disobedience and we're going to be going over the strongholds okay. areas also and so we can understand what those strongholds are and begin to break them okay by faith is is what i'm recommending i'm going to talk about it in, in the deliverance way too up at Gethsemane, but I'm recommending that we just talk about it by, by, by feather ministry. So you have to test it. You have to see yourself as a child of God. A lot of times in the testing, people say, I must not be saved. I must not be a, a child of God. That's, that's, you got to know you're a child of God. You're being tested because you're a child of God. And then you got to submit to the covering of God. A lot of times when we're in testing, we go from under the covering of God and we go do our own thing. And then consistency. We have to be consistent in the test. One day you say, God is good. The next day you have to test, God hates me. It's not consistency. God is good. I, when I was going through these, these, these trials that I was going through, I, it was so good that I was reading Job because Job went, went under fire. He was in the storm. He had rain. You know, I was looking at all this stuff. And then it got to that verse and said, he said this, I came into the world with nothing. I'm leaving with nothing. I'm going to worship God in all circumstances. That's consistency. Consistency is not just worshiping God because you have. Consistency is worshiping God when you don't have or when it's taken. All right. And then the last, what is the training that we're going to do? You have to be trained. This is so important. You've got to know I'm loved. A lot of people hate themselves have self-hate. They don't think anybody loves them. That is so not true. But in order to be taken serious, to order to go through the chastening, you have to know that you're loved. I love you. That's why I am doing this. I'm beating you because I love you. That sounds pretty crazy, but that beating gets you in order. But it's, it's because I love you too much to have you get beat by the world that I'm going to beat you in love. And then you have to understand when you're being corrected, that you're accepted. Remember this principle. If you walk in rejection, correction looks like rejection. But that is so not true. But since a lot of times the strongholds in your mind says, if I'm being corrected, what I do is wrong. So therefore I'm wrong. And so therefore I'm going to quit this ministry. I'm going to quit this marriage. I'm going to quit this relationship because they don't like me. No, that's not true. I love you to accept everything you do. I have the right to correct you. And, and you have to know my correction. I still love you. I still accept you. But that training is hard for people to get, particularly when they have this stronghold of rejection that says, nobody loves me, nobody cares. Has somebody told me that today in this down, sitting downstairs? And I'm like, what, what do you mean nobody loves you? I died for you about and then you have to endure you're going to endure some stuff it's going to be hard but enduring means you're going to push through that's training we're going to learn how to endure and then you have to respect you have to understand when you're when you're in training you got to do it with respect remember he's testing you for your character will your character hold up under fire Job's character held up on the fire. Yeah, he had a whole lot of questions, but he did not curse God in it. And then the last one is I'll show holiness. Do you actually understand when you're going through the fire and you show yourself holy and strong that God, people are watching how you go through your storms? Now, are you going through your storms in a consistent manner, showing honor to God and showing holiness? Or are you just breaking all apart and acting like banshee, acting crazy. That's what we're going to learn. So when we think about the key of breakthrough, fear outcomes are this. If, if, you, if you take the, the scripture in Hebrews, uh, training methods is based on who you trust. And in the test, will you operate by faith or fear? And these are the outcomes from fear. You will have no discipline because you're afraid. And when you're afraid, you're going to self-protect and you're going to do something that's probably stupid. We receive the trap of temporary joy. So you don't have discipline. 
And the temporary joy is I'm going to escape, use Cassie's example, I'm going to escape out of this situation and temporarily there's, there's joy there. But it's a, it's a setup because there will be mm -hmm. triggers and long-term pain because of that situation. That's how, that's how you're using this. And then the training becomes fleshly because in those situations, we feel unloved, rejected, weak, disrespected, and unholy. You see, those are the very opposite things that Hebrews uh, 12, one through four says that we are, but we don't accept it. Why? Because fear is a trap and a stronghold to keep us trapped and on that hamster wheel on that hamster wheel. Perfect love casts out fear because fear comes with torment. We say that all the time and we know we're tormented, but yet we fear everything except God. It's a trap, guys. It's a trap. And God wants to get you unstuck. These are faith outcomes from that same text. With discipline, we trust We trust our salvation. I got to fix that word. In times of testing, which Cause this sorrow or oppression. Sometimes when we're in the test, it hurts. It, it's hard. And we get sad. And there's time, there's oppression that comes with it because we got issues. Michelle and I were talking last night and she's like, well, I'm not perfect. I got issues. And y'all know, I say my issues got issues. So we should be walking pretty good together. <laughs> <laughs> we got issues. Those issues cause oppression, not possession. We are oppressed by the devil. We are not possessed. Everybody on the sound of my voice, and if you're on YouTube and you're not saved, you can get saved. Uh, but if you believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you're, you're, you are oppressed. You're not possessed because he, he redeemed you. He purchased you. And the training is spiritual because we know. When I'm going through the test, I know that I'm loved. I know that I'm accepted and will endure in the strength of God during that hard time. I couldn't think, I couldn't, I couldn't do a lot of stuff, but I knew God was there. I couldn't even read my Bible. I couldn't, it was just, it was just, it was just, my mind was just messed up. But in God's strength, I rested, I did what I was supposed to do, and I got through. We are respected because we operate in holiness. Even if you're going through a season that's tough, trust God, know he's there. And that will help you not go into the cycle of death, but go into the cycle of life. Discipline is having faith in the test. We must choose to die to self, to live for Christ. And that's the overlap between these two cycles. Yes, ma'am. So, okay, so discipline is hard. I understand it, but you said if you accept Jesus Christ, you are oppressed. You can be oppressed. Okay. Is that because of the sin that's inside of you? Yes. The closer you get to God, the more sin you grow, the more sinful you become. Not the more sinful you become, but but you become oppressed simply because like you were going out in the club shaking your booty and everything was great. But now you have the conviction of the Holy Spirit and now you are shaking your booty and the devil's like, you're a Christian. You ain't supposed to be doing that. He didn't say that before. And so now you get this oppression like, man, I'm not saved. It's because he's putting that weight on you. That's that. Well, as a Christian, there are things that God wants to work out in you. He's not going to, you know, it's not you get saved and your house is clean. You buy a house. The house don't get fixed because I purchase it. If the roof is jacked up, it's still jacked up. If it's a hole in the floor, it's still going to be a hole in the floor. I got to fix it. I'm a house. It's got to be fixed. That's Big how come word. he's, he's going to purify us. He's going to mature us and so that we can become whole, right? Amen. Hey man, that's good. I like that. That's a good word. <laughs> yeah. You I get that. We all go through it. Yep. And it's like a sorrow. Like when you do something and you, you like for example, an anger outburst. Oh boy. You can't stop. You can stop. You want to, but it just happens. And, and once it's at that level, it's that's it. 
See, that's the thing about the trap. Is that a that's a that's a trap. A emotional instability is a trap because we get to the point where we think we have no choice. Soon as you get to that point where you believe you have no choice, you fell into the snare. And how can I say that? God's given us a free will. We always have a choice. We have to know at any given, we might not like it. If someone has a gun to our head and they say to renounce Christ, you might feel like you have to do it because you'll die if you don't. But you still got a choice. Do that. You have to know you got a choice. And so another problem we have, if you back up a step, we have to stop it before it gets to the point of desperation. The enemy puts us to a place where we're desperate and desperate people, when your back's up against the wall, you're going to come out fighting, right? That's just normal, right? So you have to stop it before it gets to that point. That's why you got to recognize your triggers so you don't fall into the trap. See how simple this model is? <laughs> <laughs> but the discipline will help you get to the point where the trigger will say, I'm going to trust God. I'm saved by his grace. And you're going to jump off that wagon and you're going to jump onto the salvation train. <laughs> you got it. How, how, how are you going to know you're over your anger? Unless you're getting a point of anger. Trust me, I was an angry person. <laughs> that must have been Amanda. <laughs> it was Amanda. <laughs> but I pray God change me because I don't want to be this. And he did. But it took time and it took tasks. And after a while, it's like, y'all say to me, don't you get mad at anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you get quiet. I don't have outbursts, but I also don't have implosions. I'm still talking to God in those times. Life will tell you, I was ready to cut those people's throat at the, that, that thing last week. I, I began to speak in tongues. I began to pray because I know that I had the ability. I mean, my grandson was in the car. They weren't sure how my daughter was mad. They didn't care about me. But I was like, be angry, but sin not. I'm, I'm trusting God in my anger. <laughs> Instead of going in there and punching them, I'm being humble and submitted. Okay, how long is this going to be? I didn't raise my voice. You have to learn. It's a sign of maturity, I guess I'm telling you. That yeah. you, you don't have to act on the anger. We all get places of anger, but we have a choice how we use it. Right? And you'll learn. I, I mean, if you want to learn. Yeah. I'm desperate to learn. Yeah. But I'm desperate in a way, I guess. <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah, desperate in a good way. Desperate for God. That's a good way to be. <laughs> Praise God. Any other questions on that one? Okay. So these are some keys. I don't know how these keys are going to uh, manifest in this teaching, but they all start with S, right? And so mm, it's about 12 keys that are here and there's 12 uh, uh cycles that we're going to break. So I'm imagining he's going to use these. The book's not written yet. It's still in the process. So I don't know how all this is going to be used, but keys for discipline. Salvation bring, brings life by faith. So that's going to be a issue. How can you use your salvation to bring life? What does that look like? It's a sentence, but what's the process? Because all of these are processes. These are steps that we have to learn, right? Surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Oh, I'm going to love that one. Because can you imagine when you're in the test that you actually know you're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses and you begin to bring the heavenly host into your situation? Oh, I can't wait till I get to that chapter. I'm like, that's good. You know what I'm saying? I think it's not good to show yeah. somebody that's feeling it. I'm like, I yeah. about that. And then you have to learn to strip the weight 
off. You have to strip off the heavy burdens because because when you strip off the heavy burdens, you won't go into the flesh cycle because those burdens won't keep you down. You're going to take that stuff off. Then stand strong in the race set before you. How do you stand strong in the race set before you when you see something negative, when you see something bad? How do you stand strong? Well, we're going to learn. Mm. Go ahead. There's going to be a lot of ways I'm sure he's going to reveal to us scripturally how we stand strong because he wouldn't tell us in Hebrews 12, one through four to stand strong. If he ain't going to tell us how to do it. That just doesn't make sense to me. So see, see, see Jesus. He's a perfecter of our faith. Did you ever know? He, we say this. He's a perfecter of our faith. We got to see Jesus in our situation. But how do you do that? When you're ready to punch somebody in the face. <laughs> punching somebody in the face. <laughs> Kevin says this. We were doing something and we were talking about the Bible. And then I said, to slit their throat and he's like be a pastor people's throat i said i'm sorry but it just made me mad and he just started laughing at me he's the perfecter of my face he's got to perfect me in those areas of, of course i'm not gonna punch people but i sure have a vision of it <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> shame is disregarded for the joy you receive in Jesus. Can, I, can you imagine somebody makes you, shame means this. This is the difference between guilt and shame. Guilt says, I feel bad because I did this. Shame says, I feel bad because I am this, mm -hmm. right? And so what this is saying is he disregarded the shame for the joy he received from God. Can you imagine when you learn that discipline that people want to shame you, but you're going to disregard that and say, eh, I've got a joy in Jesus. You want to learn how to do that? I mean, just imagine. The words are one thing, but what's the process? What's the discipline that we have to get to? Stand strong in Christ, in hostility. Whoa. Don't lose heart. And they talking about you, calling you out all, all out of your name. I can't be punching people. I am a pastor. <laughs> so, so how do I handle it? <laughs> yeah, my back. I'm all you guys is back. I'm back, right? Y'all don't know what back is. Just check my t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> From Philly. <laughs> <laughs> Shed blood of Christ enables you to resist sin. Oh, the blood, the blood. I want to sin. I want to be angry. My, my temperature's boiling up. That's going to sin. The shed blood of God. Doesn't that have a value in my life and my salvation? And then submission to God enables you to resist the devil. This didn't come from Hebrews 1 and 4, but I felt as if I needed 12 disciplines to go with the 12 cycles. And so I added submission to God um, and to resist the devil. And, and I think these are the scriptures I have to double check. I know Deborah would tell me if they were wrong if she was on here. <laughs> the spirit of God enables your fruit to flourish. This is the one where I'm going to be looking at the seeds that are required for the fruit to, to bloom. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that study because I know if you have the fruit of the spirit, uh, joy, do you know how you get the seed of joy? I taught on that in the street. The seed of joy is actually suffering. That's a harsh one, you know? And so uh, I'll be exploring that in that chapter. And then spiritual gifts empower you. I'm going to be talking about the Holy Spirit gifts. I'm not going to talk about the God gifts or the Jesus gifts, but I think right now he's going to have me explore the spiritual gift because I'm trying to pump your faith up to walk by faith and uh, and not by sight. So I think I'm going to be doing the, the Holy Spirit gifts 
uh, not the God gifts or the Jesus gifts, but I don't know right now, but spiritual gifts will empower you. We'll see how that chapter unfolds. Those are the 12 disciplines that we'll learn. So okay, you only had 11 up there. It was only 11? Mm -hmm. Well, if it's only 11, I'll get 12. Okay. Um, so this is how the cycle looks together. Mm -hmm. This is the overlap. And the choice right there in the center is really one choice. Our decisions determines our path, life or death. This is it. And so the choice to break the cycle is, do you want to live for yourself or die to yourself? If you die to yourself, that's going to start you on the faith cycle. If you live for yourself, that's going to take you on a place of strongholds where you're going to need discipline to break out of that cycle. So that's how you read this. And the, the text is Psalms 8, 118, 17 and 18, which says, I shall not die, but I shall live. That's what you have to say when you're in the cycle. I shall not die. I shall live, not live in your flesh, but you live it in Christ. And recount the deeds of Christ. The Lord disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. So really, if we live for ourselves, we die in Christ. But if we die in ourselves, we live for Christ. Everything's kind of upside down in the kingdom of God. So we got to keep our heads straight, right? So that's the cycles that we're going to be going through, possibly, if we were to go do a deep dive we would be doing all of these for all the cycles. I'm not going to do that though, because the leadership team said to do a hybrid. But if you look at it, this is how it, this is, these are the transitions where you have the trust, the testing and training. This is how this model looks all together. Um, and we'll talk about those transitions and stuff each week. We'll be breaking one cycle down at a time. So this is the choice to break the cycles. This is what I'm considering. To live for God, if we think about the death cycle, I was only going to go over triggers and traps, which means I'll be teaching you strongholds and triggers that we may have. I wasn't going to teach you in this class, I'm still going to go through it, training in the carnal way, because we all know how to be carnal. <laughs> we all know how to be carnal Christians. So I was going to exclude that in this, in our class. I wasn't going to include that path. I was only going to include uh, the triggers and traps. And I was also only going to include how you live. I'm not going to include how you die. And then in, in the life cycle, I was only going to go over self-discipline and uh, training in discipline. I wasn't going to do how you trust God. So this is up for discussion, the depth in which you want me to go in. This is a question for you guys if you understand what I'm asking you. Do you understand first what I'm asking you? Um, yes. How deep do we want to go? Okay, so in the life cycle, there's three things we can go over. I was only going to go over two of them. I wasn't going to go over the training in the carnal way. So if we go over here, um, the death, I was going to do this one, the self, and I was going to do the strongholds with the traps. I wasn't going to do this one. I trust you. And so that's what I was going to cut out. And on this path, I was going to cut out this one because I figured you all know you're saved, but maybe you don't. And I was just going to do this spiritual training and how you do self-discipline. That was What's a mess? What what's a must? Oh yeah, I had that one in. What are you saying, Shelly? The le the level? Okay. Okay. Des, what did you say, Des? I liked the in between. I liked the between level. Middle level. The middle level? Okay. Okay. So that's what I'll do. Uh, I will do the, if, 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 if you have a problem or I would say this, if you want the other levels, I'll be doing those on the street or I'll be doing those uh, at Shelton. 
I'll have those teachings and it'll be in the book. So you'll get all the levels in the book because the book will have all of this stuff. It's just that this would take me a year probably if I were to take all of these different paths. And I don't think we want to do a study for a year. Okay. So that's what we'll do. So when we talk about fight on feather ministry, this is what's included in that discipline. I'm only going to include the feather ministry and teach you how to build up the faith. I'm going to be speaking on faith. I'm not going to be teaching you spiritual warfare and deliverance. Again, if you want to learn to fight, I'll have those in the book, but they'll also be taught out at Gethsemane on Sunday. So if you want to learn that, either turn in the Facebook to Gethsemane on Sunday, on the fourth Sunday where I preach, or I can also give you your the handouts. <laughs> The fourth Saturday. What did I say? Um, Sorry. Yeah, the fourth Saturday at seven. We'll get you that. And so we're going to focus this year on faith. I want to build your faith up, teach you how to do supernatural breakthrough with your faith, um, teaching you prayers of faith, prayers of healing, and, and how to uh, worship. Because that's how the feather ministry works, through prayers and, uh, and worship. And so that's why I want to teach you that as opposed to being so having y'all fight all the time. Y'all too, y'all nice. Y'all a nice minister. Y'all don't like to fight. Can't I just love people? Go ahead. You said you don't like to fight? No, y'all like to get beat up. <laughs> Sherry likes to fight. <laughs> Sherry likes to fight. Yeah, she, she will fight in a minute. <laughs> I just threw you out there, sis. <laughs> yes, I did. So this is your homework. Ask God what cycle he wants to break in this study. Not you want to break. What cycle does he want to break? Ask him. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then find one scripture to stand on by faith to break it. So, so it might take you more than a week to find it, but look for a scripture that you can stand on by faith to break it. My faith scripture, y'all probably know this, is Proverbs 3 and 5. When I'm in a situation, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's my go-to scripture when I feel like I can't trust or I'm about to break down. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. God, I'm acknowledging right now. I need you to direct my path. I need you now. That's my go-to scripture. Do you have one that will encourage your faith to stay on that tr on the track? And then I want you to decide a fast to help you break it during this study. And you can fast however you want. Um, what I will add here um, is fasting for breakthrough. I have on our YouTube station, the fasting and all the different types of fast. I will put in this study, the summary fast so that you can look at all the different types of fast. If you wanna pick one of those, you can then look at the recording for that type of fast. But you don't have to use that. You can use any type of fast you want, but I will include it. Uh, if you don't know what fasting is or you're not sure how to fast, that first recording will tell you what a fast is. I don't want to have to rehash stuff that's already out there that I've already taught, but I will reference it here and I will send this out to everyone. Uh, Michelle, I don't know if I have your email address. You might need to text that to me so I can send it. Hey. Um, I have everyone else's though. Okay. All right. Um, so that's it. That's all I have. That's what we're going to be doing this year, this year, this session um, of teaching. Uh, any questions or comments? Does this seem like it's interesting to you guys and helpful? Sounds like just what I need. Good. I really do. That's kind of what Good. I was trying to pour out last night. I'm there. And yeah, this is going to be good. Amen. I have a question. Uh huh. So, the fast, we need to have that done by next Tuesday. Just consider what fast you're going to do and, you know, pick, pick a fast that you're going to do. Maybe you'll fast Tuesday. Maybe you won't. Um, but, you, you know, you'll have to, you don't have to, but the desperation that you have for breaking the cycles will be the desperation you will use in your fast. What if you're on fast? Then, if, then that's if that's the answer. Then you can use that fast. Yep. 
convenient. We're fasting right now for 21 days. We started yesterday. Oh, yeah. Fasting too. Yeah, most churches do do a fast in the beginning of the year. We sometimes do that, but I didn't have one this year that the church body is doing. Um, this year I didn't, I didn't, uh, choose that, but this is going to be a fast that you can do for the duration of this course. And, oh, uh, yep. and that way that you can, I, you know, you can know, that's why you're putting out, what do you want to break? What cycle do you want to break? And at the end of the course, it's going to be relevant, uh, uh clear if it's broken or not, because that's what we want. We want to see God show up in your life. We're not just teaching you this just so you can get information. I want an impartation. Amen. I want some stuff broken. Make my Amen. life easier because y'all have Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Any any other questions or comments in the room or online? Well, no, I just I just want to say that I mean you say this to us all the time that it's just like, oh yeah, ask God. Ask God what cycle <laughs> instead of going, <laughs> okay, which direction, God? Which one? I mean, I know you always say pray and obey, but it's like when you said that, I'm all like, oh, yeah, duh, Wendy, ask, ask God which cycle. <laughs> yeah, Be because a lot of times we'll say, oh, I want this broken. And it's not broken because that's not what God wants out of your life not right now. I want right. to stop smoking. Well, I want you to stop sleeping around, you know? <laughs> he wants what he wants. You know, we want what we want. No, I don't want to stop sleeping around. I want to stop smoking. Well, guess what? You want to sleep around. <laughs> and nothing's broken. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Judy's cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not That's like your okay. apostle, Don't Judy. apologize. I love it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not like your apostle. I'm crazy. I'm cray cray. <laughs> No other questions, comments, concerns? Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are going to have this book uh, so that others that come behind us in KBI can understand how to break cycles and the body of Christ can understand how to break the cycles that have killed them and is killing them. We love you, Father, for this project. We love you. We honor and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Invite your friends. Amen. They can, they don't have to come for the whole series. They can come for one. You can do a study group in your home if you'd like and have people looking on the screen, you know, spread the wealth, spread the information out. Don't keep it to yourself. That's how we grow. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Nice I do have a question. You, ladies. Oh, yes, Judy. I have a question for you. Uh-huh. I have a I have a couple of sisters, I mean real sisters. They don't have uh internet, but they have phones. I've been sending them things even from my pastor. How can I send this to them to break the cycles? You can, the YouTube station, once we have it recorded, you can send the link to them on their phone and okay. then they, they can look at the YouTube recordings. And if they okay. want to join on Zoom, you can send them the link and they okay. can join on their phones uh, with the Zoom link. Okay. Oh okay. yeah, that link that, link that I sent that to you, That will really help. I have a sister right now that uh, probably needs to break some cycles. She, she, called me one day and she says i just cry and cry and cry she has there's i don't know what's going on she lives in, in the uh handout you'll see the cycles and maybe once i now that i know the level you want i get the schedule you can invite people like when we're talking about emotional instability that's the cycle that she's in um, mm -hmm. you can invite her just to that class. So she doesn't, okay. people can just t tap into the cycle that they need broken. They don't have to, uh, come to all of them. So next okay. week I'll have a teaching schedule yeah. prayerfully. 
And uh, then you will know when I'm teaching the various things. Thank you so much. Okay, good questions, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions? I <laughs> wish you knew how. I wish you could see what I see. I got a new computer and it's way smarter than I am. And I lost you for a minute, but I'm back. I heard oh. you. I just couldn't see you and I couldn't find you. And I'm back now. Okay. <laughs> no, this is good. Thank you. All right. Love you, ladies and okay. gents. God Take bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.